Newsmakers, everybody. Good to see you again. I'm Dan Cummings, and this is Christopher Columbus, the Italian explorer who sailed for Spain. School children for generations have learned of his role in the discovery of America. Recent generations have taken a closer look, though, at the man and history, and they don't like what they see. They've pointed to his harsh treatment of indigenous people. Columbus and his crew put many into slavery. There was violence and brutality, colonial oppression. Just this week, New York City schools said they're actually getting rid of the Columbus Day holiday itself and replacing it with Indigenous Peoples Day. Well, in Syracuse, as you know, Mayor Ben Walsh says the statue of Christopher Columbus will come down and Columbus Circle will be renamed and changed into a heritage and education site that will highlight the contributions of all oppressed groups, Native Americans, Black and Brown Americans, Italian Americans, and other immigrants and new Americans who all have suffered discrimination and mistreatment over the years. The statue, the mayor says, will be moved to an as yet undisclosed private location. Well, to all of that, my guests today say, not so fast. We welcome a very familiar face in the middle of your screen if you've lived in Onondaga County for more than a few years. Nick Pirro, the former county executive, and another familiar name to be sure, Tony Pietrafeza, an attorney. Mr. Pirro is now vice president of the board of the Columbus Monument Corporation. Mr. Pietrafeza is outside counsel among the corporation's legal team. He leads the legal effort. And I want to briefly remind our viewers of something you may not remember. Last October, when the mayor made his decision on this, newsmakers, this program, Program, spent a full half hour with someone who articulated the reasons behind Mr. Walsh's plan, Beth Broadway of Interfaith Works. Her organization served to facilitate the Mayor's Columbus Action Circle Committee, Columbus Circle Action Committee, which met weekly for two months to discuss what should happen to the statue of Christopher Columbus and the future of Columbus Circle. And that's our topic for today, so I welcome our guests back to the program. And I want to start by asking you, uh, Nick Pirro, before we get into the art and the history and the heritage, your group, the Monument Corporation, has been rather public lately with billboards and lawn signs and Facebook presence and social media. Uh, you're not going to change the mayor's mind. So what is happening here with your group? What's your strategy? And the mayor is, or do you think you can change his mind? Well, I think the mayor made a rash decision last year and uh, he's probably stuck with it. So we're not uh, going that route. But what we are trying to do is uh, let the people of Syracuse and the surrounding area, Onondaga County, uh, know what's going on. Uh, and we have had great results. Our uh, website has drawn thousands of comments and support. Uh, our GoFundMe page has uh, drawn many contributions and uh, the more I talk to people, no matter where I am, they say, don't let that statue come down. It's part of our history. And these are a lot of cases, non-Italians. Uh, the people know uh, what Syracuse is all about. They certainly uh, respect uh, what the Italian people did uh, 86 years ago and uh, in, in many, many ways. So what we're trying to do is get the message out that uh, the, this decision uh, by uh, the mayor uh, was one that uh, really, you know, most people didn't know about. And we're trying to let people know what it's all about. And we're drawing a lot of support from all areas of the community uh, to uh, keep the statue up. Again, the mayor has no authority to take the statue down. So we will be uh, dealing with the process. One of the reasons that Mr. Pietrafeza and others are our legal team. Uh, we believe in the end, uh, this probably will be decided in the courts. Well, let me bring in Mr. Pietrafez and then, uh, sir, what do you see as the legal grounds for challenging the mayor on this decision? Oh, he's muted. Tony, can you unmute? There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead. Please, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it's unfortunate the way it's been portrayed is that the mayor has the unfettered ability and the singular power to do what he wants to the monument. And that's just not true. The Columbus Monument is much different than the monuments in Chicago. It's much different than the monument in Boston. It's much different than monuments in other cities where mayors have unilaterally uh, taken it down. We believe that there is no power for this mayor to do what he wants to do for the reasons that he has said he wants to do it in, in law. And, and we're prepared to bring that argument to the courts if we have to. Well, you have already filed the notice of intent to sue, the notice of claim, if you will. But on yes. what ground would you do? The mayor has to take certain actions. He has to get this through the Landmark Preservation Board in Syracuse and the Public Art Commission. Uh, both of those groups have the legal authority to approve the mayor's decision. Is that where you would challenge him on this? And one well, of those two I don't, 
we don't we don't believe, and I don't want to get too far into it, Dan, because again, I think the best time, best place to have these arguments is in court. And when we do file our papers, which we're very close to doing, you'll be able to see our arguments in full, and we'll be able to have a real debate because the other side will have to answer. But I think if you look at certain provisions in the law, even the even the landmark board cannot do cannot give him the relief he wants for the simple reason that he finds Columbus offensive or somebody he's trying to curry favor for uh, from finds Columbus offensive. We think we think the law does not uh, go that way and instead protects what is a piece of public art and also a piece of history, very important part of our local history. Well, Nick Pirro, you mentioned some of the ways you're asking the public and they've come along with you, you say, in Syracuse. But do you also see this as being potentially an issue in this year's mayoral election? Because I know you've been in contact with political leaders around town as well. Uh, no, we, we really haven't uh, been in contact. We are trying to keep the politics out of this. Uh, political candidates uh, can express their opinions and take their positions, whatever they want, and that's between them and the mayor. Uh, we're not running for mayor. We're not running for office. Uh, if it becomes a political issue, which it, it could, uh, then uh, so be it. But uh, we are trying to win this thing in the court of public opinion. And again, probably in the end, in, in the legal uh, challenges through uh, the judicial system. But uh, uh, we are trying to keep out of the politics of it. Uh, we just don't agree with this decision. And this is what we intend to fight. Okay. I do I, we want to make sure I'm clear, though, that the Columbus Monument Corporation did send letters to the leaders of political parties, making it clear where you stand on this, right? It, it, we did send uh, a letter to all the uh, different political parties and committee people, letting them know where we stand. But uh, we, we sent it to everybody. We didn't just send it to one party or another or, or pick sides. So we're not in about the pick sides in this thing. We are more interested in the, uh, the uh, history of this uh, uh, Columbus Monument. Uh, we're more interested in paying tribute to the heritage of the Italian people that uh, worked in the, in the 1930s to raise the nickels and dimes and quarters and dollars to uh, pay for this entirely for this statue. Uh, we support at that time uh, Mayor Marvin selecting the site and putting together for the dedication 150 of Syracuse's most prominent citizens. And we've got the list of them right here uh, to support uh, this going up. And uh, that's been the case ever since. We've had every mayor up until this mayor who has been there, including this mayor's grandfather, who put wreaths on the monument and supported uh, our, our one of, once a year tribute to uh, uh, Columbus Day. But mostly we it knows in that uh, day, we honor a prominent Italian American in the community uh, for their work in helping make this a better community. We don't go there to just honor Columbus. We go there to honor the heritage uh, that we all have and to the people that uh, certainly have uh, made this a better community over the years. And if you looked at the list of uh, probably uh, since 1975, so uh, what, 45 or 50 people uh, that have been honored, uh, they're some of our most prominent citizens. We're going to take a quick break as we need to talk more about the art and the history and the heritage of that monument, of that circle, with my guests, Nick Pirro and Tony Pietrofeza, when we come back. Back on Newsmakers, my guests today, Nick Pirro and Tony Pietrofeza from the Columbus Monument Association, fighting hard to try to reverse Mayor Walsh's decision to take down the Columbus statue in Columbus Circle. And if they can't change his mind, which seems in, uh, unlikely at this point, if not out of, out of bounds, to, to beat him in the courts. Uh, Nick Pirro, I just want to read a one sentence from a writer by the name of Timothy Egan as we talk about the history here. Timothy Egan writes once in a while for the New York Times. He says, the U.S. right now is in a muddle over how to tell our history stuck between an aggressive revisionism that would leave few commemorative statues standing and a stubborn clinging to all the founding myths, no matter how odious or inaccurate. Talk to us about the history of this statue and Christopher Columbus and why you think taking it down might be part of that uh, revisionist history. Well, I think we're seeing that things going on around the country where people want to just uh, think they can make history go away. And uh, that's really, uh, I think, a sad uh, decision on people's part. Uh, we need to embrace history. 
Uh, if there's things we don't like, we need to make things better. And I think we do that as a country. But uh, the history of this goes back a long way. As I said, Italians, after the uh, beginning of the 1900s, just all over the country where they had come from, uh, from Italy, uh, decided they wanted to uh, honor their heritage. And they picked Columbus because he uh, brought the route to uh, the New World. And uh, he was from Genoa, Italy, and they felt that he was, uh, at that time, the appropriate person. Um, so they, uh, in Syracuse here, they commissioned an artist by the name of Renzo Baldi. This is a, a picture of the frame of the statue over in Florence, Italy, when they started to work on it. And uh, then uh, they raised the money. Uh, this is another picture of the a number of prominent Syracuse people at New York City, welcoming the granite and the stone that came from Italy that to uh, uh, do the monument. And uh, they went out and raised uh, thousands of dollars. Again, we've got a list of all the contributions, and on there you see nickels and dimes and quarters uh, from people that could barely afford it but knew how important it was to pay tribute to their heritage. And this is what this is all about. It's, it's the Italian-American heritage in this community and what they decided to do. And for those people that uh, want to dismiss it, uh, someday somebody may want to dismiss your heritage and you won't like it very much. Uh, I say to everyone, if they allow, if these revisionists allowed it to take our statue down, your statue may be next because they won't stop once they get uh, the taste of uh, having some success. These are people that uh, I think don't have any appreciation of how hard work these people worked, uh, what it meant to them, and what it still means to a lot of us, uh, and a lot of people, and a lot of people of non-Italian uh, ethnicity that who have, I've talked to who are behind us. And I think you'll see more of that in, in the near future. So uh, it's it's an important piece of public art. Uh, it's it's in the, 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 the document that talks about downtown public art. It's right in here uh, in one big whole page. It's a beautiful piece of public art. And again, uh, you don't just destroy public art because once you start trying to take some public art because somebody doesn't like it, there's always something that somebody won't like. But uh, again, uh, if, it, it's, if it's us today, it may be you tomorrow. And I think people need to consider that. Well, let me move to Tony Piatrafesa, since you both of my guests today have heritage deep roots in this community and their families before them. Tony, I don't think anybody would quibble with the fact that it's a work of art and that it, it exemplifies the heritage and the history that Nick just outlined. However, do you and your group give any credence to the fact that we know more about Columbus now than we did when that statue was built, and not all of it is very good? There's the doctrine of discovery. There's genocide. There were atrocities committed. That then that's why people are moving now to say, move the statue somewhere, recognize Columbus and the Italian American heritage. But this got we know much more about Columbus now than we did, and what we know uh, discounts him as a as a hero do you give any credence to the history that we've learned in the past several decades well i mean it, they're they're trying to place the blame of 400 years of something else on on columbus which i think is wrong but but going back to that dan and to answer your question i think it, the difficult thing here that i think a lot of people including the mayor is having is we can look at the the our image of columbus may have changed as a community over the past 90 years but the statue the monument continues to represent the very same thing for the people that look at it when i look at that monument i don't look at columbus i think of my grandfather i agree my grandparents my great uncle joe who was on the committee in 1934 who helped lead the the fight to raise the last bit of money there um Renzi was in his house when they brought the when they brought the, the statue to Syracuse so I mean it goes back a long way I think the people that worked with my family on the north side uh, Nick's family and that's what that monument means to us so I think in this case where we do have something that is not only a piece of art we, we can't neglect the fact that the obelisk was designed by Dwight Baum, who was a local architect, but also the fact that it has historical significance as telling the story of Italians in central New York. And we have to be able to look past Columbus, who sits at the top, to look at the monument as a whole and accept the history of what that has become for our community. It's a fab part of the fabric of our community, and I think you can't ignore that. The Landmark Board can't ignore it either, even if the mayor chooses to. 
Well, we need to talk more about not only these issues, but also potential solutions short of a lawsuit, which seems almost certain now, but maybe not. When we come back, more with Nick Pirro and Tony Pietrofis. Back on Newsmakers about the Columbus statue and the Columbus Circle in the heart of downtown Syracuse. Nick Perro, you know what the mayor's proposed? Uh, the heritage site, the educational site. The Columbus statue goes away, goes to a private location, and then you would recognize all sorts of groups uh, at the Columbus Circle. That well, originally, you say, was one of your ideas. When we uh, were having the dialogue circle with Interfaith Works, uh, one of the things that we came up with was exactly that the statue stays the monument stays the fountain but that we take that pocket park where the Paulson building used to be and convert it to a heritage site that's where the idea came from we even offered to raise twenty five thousand dollars to get it off the ground to get it started and then we would have local artists and people involved in the different ethnic groups decide what they want there whether it's a statue or a, 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 a interactive kiosk or whatever uh, so they could uh, uh, be recognized. But uh, so, uh, you know, the mayor then took it and said, well, the statue goes, but we like your idea. Well, uh, our, again, our idea is that the statue is there first. It's been there for 86 years. Uh, the fountain stays and that uh, this mayor doesn't have the authority to take it down. And uh, we just, uh, again, uh, think it's something that's important. He's dissing the Italian American people of this community uh, by his uh, failure to uh, uh, recognize what was done and what was put into this and what it means and he would uh, it would be no different than if, if people wanted to go up and uh, to uh, the West End and take the stone throwers mon monument down because they were doing uh, illegal acts uh, it, it's crazy it, it just doesn't make sense they've recognized certain things we've recognized something and we think it's important that it remained, but we can include more people in it. We can uh, take the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, I, I ask people to just drop the hate and seek the truth. Because a lot of things that have been written about Columbus aren't true. A lot of things that happened were well after him and not even, you know, he never even stepped foot in the United States. Uh, a lot of bad things happened, but uh, again, we're in, we're in 2021 and uh, we can't go back and, and try to say we're going to correct something that happened 500 years ago. Tony Pietrofeza, uh, the mayor is obviously not here to debate this. I don't think he would have had any interest in that. But I did talk to his chief policy officer, Greg Lowe, before we sat down for tape. He said that we have tried repeatedly to work with the Monument Corporation, but they have chosen to personalize it, to basically attack the mayor directly on this and uh, go into the, into the courts with it. What's your response to that? Uh, I, I don't think, first of all, to the extent that they, that the city or the corporation council is saying they tried to work with us. We had one uh, letter from them. We had one phone call with them and basically told us, you know, we were dead in the water. So we take that as putting the gauntlet down and, and we're ready to, it's ready to move forward. I think actually, you know, I, I don't want to cast this person on the mayor, but from what I understand, you know, it, he says he wants to work with us, but only if we agree with his ultimate outcome, which we can't abide by. And again, which we don't believe uh, we would be letting him have a pass on something he doesn't have the legal power to do. Is there anything, and, either, go ahead, Nick, yeah. We have a letter sent May, uh, March 3rd to the mayor which outlines our willingness to work with him. We have never got a response to this letter. But the statue yeah, coming down is a non-starter, right? Now, I bet that letter didn't say, let's work with you, the statue can go. The statue coming down is a non-starter for your corporation, right? Absolutely, uh, that's the case. And I, I'm, go We ahead. think it should be part of the history. Uh, let everybody's history be shown there. But uh, again, we're, our, our monument is there. It's already there. It's not like we're doing this from scratch. Is there any chance that uh, I don't? I've said a couple times I don't think there is. This is this has got to be headed to a court of law, right? I, the, with the statue as a non-starter, right, Tony? Uh, unfortunately, I think you're probably right, Dan. Uh, you know, I think as Nick has said, we have offered an alternative view of dealing with the circle, which we think includes everybody, which is fine. That's what that's what we want to see uh, happen, but leave what's a valuable piece of history and a valuable piece of art alone and add to what is a great gathering place for everybody in central New York. But I think we're, 
there are certain um, arguments that need to be made that the mayor's going to have to make. Uh, I'm glad that he recognizes, or I hope he still recognizes, that he has to go to the Landmarks Board. We think that's a futile act on his part, and we're prepared to block that number one, and also if the Landmark Board finds in his favor to ask the fourth department to review that decision as well. Because we, again, we, we think the monument is protected by um, local and state law uh, against what the mayor wants to do. I mean, you got to remember something, Dan, in 1991, um, the state put in $200,000 to renovate the statue. They only did that if the city was able to raise an additional outside money. And so the association, the corporation raised $167,000, again, all private money. If that money wasn't raised, the state wouldn't have put in their part. And we only raised the money because in the contract between the city and the state, the, the city obligated itself to maintaining and preserving the monument in its present condition. I don't think that that promise uh, goes away anytime soon. Okay. And we're just asking the mayor to stand by that. Got to take our last break back after this. We've been talking about the Columbus Circle and the statue of Christopher Columbus. We've been talking about heritage and Italian history and a work of art that the mayor says is coming down. And on our program today, we've been talking with the other side of that story. I want to thank Nick Pirro and Tony Pietrofeza for joining us on Newsmakers today. Gentlemen, I'm sure since this one is far from over, the three of us will be talking as the spring turns into summer and fall um, as we talk more about this. Thanks for joining us, all right? Stay well, guys. And we'll thank see you, you soon. You bet. Thank you, everybody out there, and we'll see you next time on News Channel 9.